Ladies and gentlemen, AMD have been conducting some very interesting interviews recently, and perhaps one of the more intriguing ones that I actually covered already was with 4Gamer, where they actually went over some of the upcoming changes they're going to make for RDNA 4, and also some very interesting comments on the next generation consoles, the PS5, the Xbox Series X, and some other stuff too. But now there's yet another interview, and this is with itmedia.co.jp. As the name would imply of the website, it is actually a Japanese website, so I do need to use a Google Translate. And during this interview, there was a ton of very interesting nuggets, including why AMD did not release a faster RDNA 3 based GPU, which could outperform an RTX 4090, as well as what their pricing strategy is going to be for RDNA 4 and a bunch of other stuff. We're going to be covering this really quickly in this video. This is going to be definitely a very fast video for me um, because I'm actually finishing a couple of projects at the moment. I'm not on camera for that very reason as I'm trying to finish them off in preparation for the weekend as basically I'm going to be out of commission. Uh, a couple of friends are going to be coming over. We're going to be playing some retro video games on the PlayStation, the Saturn. Uh, I'm going to be playing some Xbox stuff, uh, PC games as well, whole bunch of stuff, including, if things go well, uh, multiplayer Command & Conquer, which I'm really looking forward to, and uh, free player Streets of Rage 4, which I think is going to be blast. Anyway, enough of that, let's talk about graphics cards, shall we? Seems like a good idea, since that's what the video is about. So let's start things out with some comments from Rick Bergman. This is regarding RDNA 3 and why they did not release a more powerful GPU. So basically, as you know, the 7900 XTX was targeting under a thousand US dollars. And obviously the 7900 XT was targeting even cheaper. But what they didn't want to do is essentially to release a graphics card, which would have been even higher end, which would cost more money and consume more power. They basically were very mindful of power consumption. There were a lot of rumors early on when we're hearing about Lovelace that the 4090 would go up to 600 watts. Now, I personally am very skeptical that it would ever launch at that. I think that those were engineering boards from what sources have told me. But who knows? It doesn't really matter anyway because 450 watts is hardly sipping the juice, is it? It's still a lot of cons power consumption. Now, interestingly, a couple of sources have actually told me since the launch of N31 that it was never actually intended to be the highest in SKU. Very early on, very early, before, you know, there was ever designs finalized 120 compute units was talked about internally by amd but they scrapped it the reason they scrapped it is apparently exactly the same thing the same reason that they're talking about here basically it would have cost too much money they didn't think it was worth it and a bunch of other stuff as well now to my understanding i still think that n31 did not hit the targets that it was supposed to basically in terms of clock speed and other things but none of that really matters of course because the products are what they are um, and it's going to be more interesting to me anyway to see what happens on the mid-range N32 and N33 because let's face it, a thousand bucks is still bloody expensive, right? Like, it's a lot of money. A thousand US dollars is, well, it, it's a crap ton of cash, you know, so I think two, three, four hundred US dollars is going to be a lot more interesting to a lot more people. I think also not an Apple fan has mentioned to me in private a couple of times that it heard 120 compute units. I'm not 100% on that. I think he did. Um, but uh, I believe that was on Discord he told me that. I could be wrong. But either way, um, what I do know is that, yeah, 120 compute units, a couple of my sources have told me, was actually considered. But I was very skeptical whether it was true or not because you know how it is. You hear so many different whispers and it's like, uh, it's really hard to know. And obviously because there was no actual skew with specifications, it, you just don't know whether it's true or not. But another set of very interesting comments actually were made from David Wang, um, this is a little bit later in on in the interview. Jesus, I can't speak today. For the foreseeable future, he says, we are on RDNA f uh, 4, we plan to make subtle improvements to the current ray tracing pipeline. Updates from two, RDNA 2 to 3, with things like hardware processing of ray flags, sorting of BVH or bounded volume hierarchy, hardware reading of discarding unnecessary textures, yada, yada, yada. This improves performance of ray tracing by around 60%. RDNA 4... That will be released in the future. Improvements are made to the current ray tracing pipeline to improve execution efficiency. Realize a highly flexible processing system. However, the amount of dedicated hardware to be installed in the function expansion, of course, it needs to be considered and balanced with cost. 
as I've said many times, the emphasis to sell a high-end GPU for a thousand US dollars. Now, don't forget, David Wang has also recently said, I think it was in the 4Gamer interview, that what they didn't want to do is add a bunch of fixed function stuff, such as the tensor cores, which would only be used for very specific, specific, excuse me, purposes. So if they want to do AI, they would also, or machine learning, they would also want it to be for stuff such as better artificial intelligence in games. Now, honestly, AMD have a lot of options because of, for example, their purchase of the Linux. So they can certainly do um, a lot of different things with RDNA 4 or future, um, let's say, APUs and so on and so on. However, I think that their their strategy of like a thousand US dollars is probably going to be something that they're going to stick with for RDNA 4. I mean, you pretty much said it black and white or grey and black here, actually, I suppose, technically. But um, I don't think they're going to want to like create a chip which is going to try to outperform NVIDIA. Now, I think for the cards that they are going to launch, they're going to be extremely competitive. But I think also AMD's strategy, well, I think there's multiple strategies. First of all, they need a GPU architecture and a set of accelerators and products, of course, which are going to be, well, imp impressive for APUs, for desktops, laptops, whatever other crap. But naturally, they also have other partners, such as Valve with the Steam Deck, um, you have, of course, Sony and Microsoft with their respective consoles and God knows who else as well. So those products need to be very customizable, very power efficient. And they also need products which, of course, you do, well, when you have like a, let's say, a console, die size is extremely important. Even if, let's say, the PS6, hypothetically, was to utilize MCM, they still can't have a bunch of space on a die which is not going to do too much. So I think... AMD doing this and kind of, you know, going that, this route is going to be very interesting. From my understanding, and I've already made a couple of videos of RDNA 4, the performance is actually pretty impressive. They're doing up to two times performance target, I think, for RDNA 4. However, that might be FP performance, floating point performance, not actual, you know, frame rate goes brr performance. But who knows, honestly, you know, the, the rumor mill is a rumor mill and also whether they hit those targets is also something that's very interesting. However, it's a pretty much a, a really big roundup design. Um, you, of course, still have the Infinity Cache, as you would expect, and it's still chiplet based. But the GCDs, as I mentioned in a previous video, are basically being split and now you have GCXs. So essentially a bunch of GCXs can come together to form a greater whole. So you could have like one, two, three GCXs and uh, basically they would form a GCD. And it does look very impressive. It's just a lot of complexity. I suppose that's the word I'm looking for. It just seems like it could be quite complex. It's going to be very interesting to see how this turns out, especially versus RTX 50. Um, I've already leaked, of course, just very recently, the roadmap from uh, Intel and uh, what they're doing with uh, Battle Mage, which is allegedly going to be around RTX 4080 performance. That, um, that is Battle Mage, is going to launch sometime the first half of next year. So I think RDNA 4, I mean, there were some, you know, there were some reports it's coming sooner than expected. I know what I don't. I, I think some people were trying to make it out that it's going to be this year, and it's just not going to happen. It's definitely going to be next year. I mean, for goodness sake, they haven't even launched all of the. You know, they haven't even launched N thirty two or N thirty three yet. So there's no way in balls. Um, it, we're not going to be getting it any time soon. Let's just say that RDNA four is definitely going to be next year. Um, and obviously, as well, it's quite a lot of work to get these architectures ready. It's going to be very interesting, though, to see what happens. I'm extremely excited, actually, to see what ha uh, what happens with Blackwell as well as RDNA 4. Um, but for me, a lot of the mid-range stuff at the moment is really interesting. I'm very, very, very hyped to see what actually N32's performance targets are. Um, I've heard different numbers, including that it's around 10% slower than the 7900 XT, but honestly, I think that may be a little bit ambitious. I think it may be a little bit slower. I'm always kind of feeling kind of more pessimistic at the moment, because obviously it's very difficult to kind of know 100%, but ultimately... I don't really care whether it's 10 or 20% slower or whatever. I just want, you know, good priced GPUs. There's some really good deals at the moment with Intel Arc. I just wish the drivers were just a tiny bit more mature. But, you know, they're getting there. With that said, guys, this video is already getting a little longer than I anticipated. So, I'm going to let you all go. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.